Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to Manifested Online Platform. My name is Moneki and today we are learning chemistry form 2. The topic is effect of an electric current on substances. Effect of an electric current on substances. I want to start by running you through the objectives so that you know what is expected in this topic. Therefore, we start with the objectives. By the end of the chapter, the learner should be able to. So this is what you are expecting to know by the end of this chapter. One, define So define conductor, non-conductor, electrolyte, non-electrolyte, current, and electrode. So by the end of the chapter, you should be able to define all those terms. Second, you should be able to differentiate between conductor and an electrolyte depending on the particles they contain. differentiate between an electrolyte and conductor depending on the particles they contain. We will be looking at these particles in our, previous, in our next lessons. Third, explain the process of electrolysis and define the terms anode and cathode. Explain the process of electrolysis and define the terms anode and cathode. Again, we will be defining these two important terms and explaining what happens in electrolysis. Then fourth, should be able to state the products of electrolysis of binary compounds. State the products of electrolysis of binary compounds. the products of electrolysis 
of binary compounds. Again, we will be discussing what bound binary compounds are, and again, getting the product of electrolysis of those binary compounds. Lastly, should be able to state some applications of electrolysis. State some applications of electrolysis. There are several applications of electrolysis. Therefore, by the end of this chapter, again, you should be able to mention or state some of the applications of electrolysis. Therefore, that is what you need to know in this topic, or by the end of this chapter, then you are supposed to understand all that. Maybe to go through them once again, that by the end of the chapter, the learner should be able to, one, define a conductor, non-conductor, electrolyte, non-electrolyte, current, and electrode. Second, differentiate between an electrolyte and a conductor depending on the particles they contain. We are going to look at those particles which they contain and which, are, which help them conduct electric current. Third, should be able to explain the process of electrolysis and define the terms anode and cathode. Explain the process of electrolysis and define the terms anode and cathode. And fourth, should be able to state the products of electrolysis of binary compounds. And lastly, should be able to state applications or some applications of electrolysis. Be able to state some applications of electrolysis. That is what you need to understand by the end of this chapter. Having said that, I want us now to get into some definition of terms. Our topic is effect of an electric current on substances. Therefore, I want us to now define what electric current is. Electric current. Because that is now the main thing we'll be discussing in this chapter. We see that an electric current is a flow of electrons. It is a flow of electrons. That is what you call electric current. And as we will be discussing later in this chapter, we see that electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal through the circuit. So that is now the direction of flow of electrons. So when you talk about electric current, we are talking about flow of electrons. Therefore, I now, I now want us to discuss conduction of electricity. In Form 1, during introduction to chemistry, we learned that not all substances conduct electricity. Some substances conduct electricity, while others do not. Those that conduct electricity, we call them conductors. Therefore, conductors are those substances which allow electric current to pass through them. 
So we define the first term, which is conductor. And a conductor, we've said that it is a substance is a substance or which allows electric current to flow through them. That is now what we call a conductor. And to give examples, there are so many examples. And these examples were metals. And metals, this include metals like aluminium, magnesium, zinc, sodium, it is, there are so many metals, aluminium, magnesium, zinc, sodium, and apart from the metals, then you also have graphite. So generally, metals and graphite are conduct electricity, and conducting electricity means that they allow the flow or electrons or electric current to flow through them. So metals, all metals, allow electric current to flow through them. And graphite, graphite which is a non-metal, also allows electric current to flow through it. Later we'll, we'll be discussing why these two substances are able to allow electric current to flow through, through them. The second term, is non-conductor. We see that a non-conductor is a substance that does not allow or which do not allow electric current to flow through it. That is what you call a conductor. So a substance substance that does not allow electric current to flow through it, that is what we call a conductor. And there are so many examples. Examples of non-conductors include plastics, rubber, wood, all those are non-conductors because they do not allow electric current to flow through them. So examples. include plastic, rubber, wood. Those are just examples of non-conductors. They do not allow electric current to flow through them. And therefore, I hope you get now the difference between a conductor and a non-conductor. A conductor is that substance that allows electric current to flow through it, while a non-conductor is that substance that does not allow electric current to flow through it. And we have, given, we have given examples of conductors. You have seen that these are metals. And metals, there are so many metals. This includes magnesium, aluminium, sodium, copper, zinc, all those are metals. They are good conductors or they are conductors of electricity. Second, we have given the examples of non-conductors and you have seen that non-conductors are those substances which do not allow electric current to flow through them and they include substances like plastic, wood, rubber. Those are just a few examples of non-conductors. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss the electrical conductivity in solids. Electrical conductivity in solids. But before that, I will leave you with this assignment.
And the assignment is distinguish between distinguish between conductors and non-conductors, giving an example in each case. Distinguish between conductors and non-conductors, giving an example in each case. Ensure that you've done that before we meet in the next lesson, which we are going to discuss electrical conductivity in solids. See you in the next lesson.